Lucario is not super highly used competitively. It's got decent offensive stats, and it can choose to be ran as either a physical attacker or a special attacker. Its fighting steel typing does give it some pretty solid use. On the special side, we can use Nasty Plot to immediately double its special attack, and stab options like Aura Sphere along with Flash Cannon hit super hard. It can bypass its mediocre speed with Priority Vacuum Wave, and Lucario is the type of fool that can just punch the hell out of you without even making contact. Look, the Pokemon times in 2024 are crazy. Lucario is borderline never used, and that means it's my job to show this bad boy some love. If you're into that kind of thing, you should consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Skarmory, and I have myself a boulder dog. The pioneers used to drive these babies for miles. And most of all, we're both kind of here to set up the Stealth Rock. I imagine as a lead Skarmory, you're just gonna kind of, uh, we're just gonna lay some rocks down. I, I'm basically, I'm focus ashed, and we really don't care about taking anything like a body press. So I do move first, I get up my Stealth Rock there, which is nice, as uh, they're gonna end up setting up their own. So we just compare sizes here real quick, and our job here is basically done. I obviously cannot touch this Skarmory, and I don't want to anyway with the Rocky Helmet potential. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch right out here into the Moltres. I know that uh, in general, I, there's nothing this thing can do to me. Obviously, I'm kind of concerned about like a iron defense and body press set But of course Moltres can just go ahead and roast that bad boy for dinner So they decide to go for that body press Of course, it does not in fact activate the flame body because I'm convinced this Moltres It doesn't actually have any real flames. However, I do know that they don't want to stay in here versus this I, Instead of going for the flamethrower, I'm gonna go ahead and predict the switch into something pretty much exactly like this They go into the Gastrodon, which is a good check to the Moltres here Except I am actually just gonna head out. I just whip a Yui, and with the U-turn there, that's gonna allow me to grab myself a nice little matchup. And I do have just the perfect homegirl for the job. I've got the the Zarina, the Serena. She's got a lychee berry, and she's got a fat booty, and she's here for a good time. So the one thing is, this Gastrodon probably doesn't want to stay in here. However, I have a plan in basically going for a Trailblaze, try to boost up the speed, and uh, at least give Serena a little potential for like a sweeping chance or at least try to break some holes in some stuff so i go for the trailblaze here they are going to get that thing out of there because that thing is absolutely allergic as hell uh, to grass and they're going to end up bringing in the cerulet so this thing comes in takes stealth rock damage which is nice and as the trailblaze isn't going to do much it actually it does not activate a weak armor ability which means this thing is going to be flash fire and while i am faster here i have the potential to go for something like an endure and then acrobatics, but I'm kind of realizing that I don't have much to hit this with if it's gonna potentially set up for something like a Swords Dance. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and conserve this arena, it might be good for later, as I do have a pretty good defensive answer to this, and honestly a good defensive answer to pretty much damn near everything, which is gonna be the Aloma Mola. Uh, we are extremely thick out here as they go for the Bitter Blade, barely even scratches us, and you're like, did, did you even touch me? I can't even tell. So they steal a little bit of our health, but not that big of a deal. And I would love to find myself in a position here for Lucario. In the back, it's looking really nice against pretty much their entire team, and that's basically the plan. I'm gonna go for the flip turn here. On the chance that they stay in and go for something like a Terra, I still have a good position, but they actually end up switching, which is gonna bring in the Umbreon. And that's gonna put us in a fantastic spot, because now we can just go ahead, pop another U-turn in water form, and now it's time to bring in the Lucario. I've, I've got myself in a spot where as long as you can get this thing in a potential to be able to set up, we're looking really nice. Plus, we also have the added benefit of them not knowing if we're going to be physical or special. So, I bring in Lucario, Luke, Luke Skywalker, and at this point, it's time to think some nasty thoughts. I know this Umbreon doesn't want this matchup, and they're going to end up bringing in basically the thing we're trying to bait, and that's going to be the Skarmory. So, Skarmory generally is a pretty good check to a physical Lucario, but as they come in, they're gonna be like, oh, okay, that is not good news because now with the nasty plot, I'm gonna go ahead and double that special attack. And after a little bit of stealth rock chip, I have one way to just delete this fella. And that is to go for the Terra fighting. I'm gonna boost up my fighting stab just a bit, enough to be able to hit this thing on that special side with the nasty plot and Aura Spear should be able to kill this thing. So we are ready to go fisting with the bit, pause with the big fist on our head. <laughs> And at this point, uh, we get to show off the Aura Sphere here, and that is, I don't care who you are, after a nasty plot, it is gonna hurt a lot. That does take care of the Skarmory, and one nice little hit, and down goes uh, one of their main defensive annoying answers. And also, 
We are in a fantastic spot with the Lucario once again, because while we are slower than some of their options, we have the priority with the Vacuum Wave. They also, they do have the Serilege who can come in here and they do resist, obviously, the ability to, I can't hit him with fighting. They also resist my other stab with the Flash Cannon, but here's the bad news for them. After a nasty plot, that is going to take care of it, thanks to that Stealth Rock chip. So down goes the Sharp Boy, and uh, now it's basically, we've got ourselves in the position we were looking for. Lucario with that Terra, there's not really any easy answer. So they can go into the Gliscor, it was going to often be more of a physical defensive answer. And uh, that thing's not going to enjoy a flash cannon either. They also realize that Lucario has gotten out of hand. Literally. And that's going to force a run. And Lucario just spooked that boy out of the match. I really was hoping that we were going to have the ability to vacuum wave their, um, their Cyclozar. But they head out just to save the lives of their teammates, which is, is fine. However, we are unsatisfied, so I do have another match here for you where we're going to try to get this bad boy to pop off once again. And with that, let's jump into it. Alright, so this time, Buddy's going to go ahead and lead off with the Rillaboom. They likely just expect the Lycanroc, which is kind of the problem because this thing's it's an obvious lead. But, I mean, it's fine because I'm sashed. I know I can guarantee I can get my rocks up. However, they do have a Rapid Spinner in the form of potentially like the Tentacruel. I realize I'm just going to go for it anyway. I'm going to set those up and kind of put them in a position where they're going to need to get rid of those if they would like. And also, they actually are going to predict the switch and they decide to go for the U-turn, which is good play because, you know, it does break my sash. Also, does a ton of damage. Kind of makes me feel like that thing is choice banned. So it does give me a little bit of info kind of about how that thing's built. So on the free switch, they have the option to go into whatever they like. Turns out they're going to go into one of our Rocky Brethren. Now... Ordinarily, I cannot touch this thing. However, I am a punching dog, and while this thing is going to be physically defensive and can definitely take at least one, I'm going to go for that close combat regardless and do a bunch to it. So I punch him. I do do over half, which is going to be pretty nice. And after the defensive drops, I know that this thing probably comes in wanting to set up the stealth rock, and that's exactly what it's going to do. So they get up the rocks of their own. It's kind of a trade I'm willing to make in terms of just getting some chip on this fella, and Golem is not going to be too big of an issue, or at least shouldn't be. So. I obviously can just end up knocking this thing out with another close combat, and it's a really good play because their only defensive switch into that would be something like a Zapdos, and then Zapdos is threatened by rock coverage. So I go for that close combat, they decide to just sack off uh, the Golem, so he comes in, lays down his little baby rocks, and then gets sent to the damn Shadow Realm. So I'm also healing up because of the grassy terrain, which is fun. As a mon that's weak to grass, you feel like it would hurt you, but it heals you, and we're looking relatively healthy here. So. Bad news is, back comes Grassy Monkey, and this thing can obviously go for that Grassy Glide. With the priority, just take care of the Lycanroc, and I do still have some value left in that fella. So, knowing that they're going to go for that priority, I can freely switch right into the Serena. And that is pretty nice, because Queenly Majesty's like, no, I, I am a queen, and you just, I don't know, you can't do it for some reason. So, um, also, we know that this thing's Choice Bander. We know that it's locked into that Grassy Glide. It obviously is just basically in a position where they're forced to switch. So I'm going to go for that Trailblaze and see if I can't get the Zarina to at least do some stuff. If you're interested in seeing this thing in kind of full mode, check out the Serena video I did. I also called this thing it, it, its name two different ways. I don't know, man. But I go for that Trailblaze. What's actually really nice is that it's boosted by that grassy terrain, which is going to allow it to do a bunch of damage to the Tentacruel. However, the problem is it then heals up from leftovers, and then the grass disappears. So I'm like, well, that makes it, it puts me in a weird, really weird spot because... I'm not going to be able to do enough, and then I die to a Sludge Bomb. So I actually decided to bust out the Terra Grass here. I'm going to boost up my Trailblaze uh, just a bit further. I've been messing around with a kind of a couple different options for Terras on this thing. And it turns out if you want to do anything with Trailblazes, you kind of need all the help you can get. So I go for that Terra Grass, and instead they're actually going to end up switching into the Zapdos, which I know is a good check to this thing, except a lot of the time people don't expect the coverage with that uh, Triple Axle. So as the Zapdos comes in, the main thing I'm worried about with this is its ability static, which is annoying. Also, potential for a Rocky Helmet. As I go for that Trailblaze, we do get that speed boost. We do not take any Rocky Helmet chips. We know it's probably what it's heavy duty boots. So I can now go ahead and bust out the secret coverage with that Triple Axle. The problem becomes, while I know it's going to likely grab the kill, I have to touch it three times, which almost guarantees that I'm going to get static. And I do on the third one, of course. So that's going to kind of ruin my speed boost I got from the Trailblaze. And at least we do take care of the Zapdos, which is going to be, it's a, it was a good defensive answer for them. And with that being gone, they have a lot less things to switch into. So, Zapdos is gone. I am at plus one speed, except paralyzed. 
and it's it's all confusing out here. So on the empty switch, they can now bring in a Hisuian Arcanine, which is very scary. A lot of the time, these things are going to be Choice Scarf. If we saw the Rillaboom with a Choice Band, I imagine this thing is Scarf. I'm just going to go ahead and bust out the Endure. I know it's going to be faster than me anyway, but I kind of just want to scout what they're going to go for. And it turns out they actually expect the switch into the Aloma Mola. They predict me to go into that, but instead I stay. So the Wild Charge isn't going to do anything, and that actually gives me a little bit of extra life with the Serena here. So knowing that they're going to be forced to switch, I just decide to go for another Trailblaze here. I'm thinking to myself, if I can just continue to Trailblaze, we don't even care about the speed drop from the Para. I'm going to try to get this thing speedy once again. And as they bring in young Squidward, he does die to a another Trailblaze, which is awesome. So we get that speed boost. Zarina is going for, going for a little bit of some, some flower action out here and sassy as hell at the same time. And now they can go into at least whatever they like, which does turn out to be the Rillaboom. So, problem with Rillaboom for them is they know I have the triple axle coverage. Problem for me is that I'm paralyzed. But I'm thinking after two, I actually, am I still faster? I think I'm still faster. So they obviously can't go for priority. I go for that triple axle and I get fully paralyzed, which is an absolute kick to the nuts. Because now I get U-turned to the non-existent nuts and that is going to kill me. So, choice banded Rillaboom with that U-turn is enough to stop the potential for Serena to sweep. I mean, it wasn't likely just because of odds are I'm going to get paralyzed anyway. But at least the good news about being knocked out by a U-turn is I can kind of see what they want to switch into first, and then I can decide a matchup. So at this point, here's what's going through my mind. As Arcanine comes in, this thing is a bit of a problem, but I do at least still have the Aloma Mola, which I have no reason not to just go directly into here. I know I can take a wild charge from this thing, and Buddy is allergic to water. So... I know that they are likely going to switch out here, but I'm just going to go for a Scald regardless. I want to get as much chip as possible, and I know that Rillaboom potentially comes in, but hey, a Scald Burn would be super nice here, so that's what I'm going to try to do. Rillaboom does come in, he's ready to play the damn drums, and I just throw some hot water at his head. Imagine just switching in and just being immediately greeted by hot water to the face. It's not apparently hot enough to burn him, which is annoying, and at this point, I kind of am like, I don't really want to take unnecessary damage on the Aloma Mola here. So, one guy that likes to take unnecessary damage is gonna be my Gumshoes. For whatever reason, I've been working with Gumshoes, trying to get it to do something, and most of the time, here's what it does best. You send him in, and just as, he just dies. So, they go for the U-turn, which at least we can live, which is like, hey, holy shit, he, he, li he lives something, which is fantastic. However, with that U-turn, they can now go into whatever they like, and uh, that kind of opens the door for that Arcanine to come back in. As they have half of their team left, I'm looking at it with all the chip we've kind of accrued on everything. One of the options for me as a late game answer is going to be the Lucario. And I'm going to try my best to get that thing to clean us up, clean him up for us. So they go for the head smash here. Does lock him into the head smash, which is going to kill the gumshoes. But I mean, that's fine because we know that this thing is stuck into the rock move. And while it does still do a ton of damage with that, one fella that doesn't really care about rock moves is going to be the Lucario. And forcing kind of either a switch here or them to just go for that not very effective attack knowing that we can live is going to put us in almost a checkmate position in that Lucario just needs to set up once and we are in a very good spot. So I'm going to go for that nasty plot. The only other mod that we have not seen is going to be the Hydreigon here in the back. And while that thing is going to be faster, it's not faster than this vacuum. So they do bring back in the Rillaboom who is actually kind of an interesting turn here because I go ahead and think some nasty ass thoughts. It is going to boost my special attack and we also heal up from that grass a bit, but then the grass is also going to go ahead and disappear, which is great because that means this thing can't go for a grassy glide, which actually wouldn't end up knocking us out anyway, but I'm just going to go for that aura sphere. I can outspeed and that takes care of the Rillaboom. So Lucario has find himself in a nice little late game sweep position where they have two mons left and we don't really care how fast either of them are because we have that priority. So, as they bring in the Arcanine, this thing has been getting absolutely destroyed all day by the Stealth Rocks, which is why they were very important. I do not care about that Choice Scarf. I can go for that Vacuum Wave, and we're just hoovering bitches up out here. Call me Young Dyson with the Vacuum. So, that takes care of that Vacuum Wave with that Stab, Life Orb, after a Nasty Plot. It does so much, and it's super clutch. So... Final Mon is going to be the Tripod Dragon, which has been entirely very scary this whole match. However, we are not afraid because after a Nasty Plot and the Life Orb, we should be able to grab a kill with that Vacuum Wave. And that's why Lucario doesn't care about being not that fast. That's going to end up finishing off uh, the Dragon there. And that is going to be the end of the game. So once again, you find yourself a position to set up with the Lucario. 
and this time the priority goes uh, is, is going to pay off. So that's going to be the end of the match, and uh, that is going to do it. Lucario is fun. I might end up messing around with a physical attacking one, just because it can also have some really cool options with that. Uh, but thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support on the videos lately, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.